the I think it's the 17th um, so we are heading from the island of Hiva Oa over to Nuka Hiva um, so we've just been on an overnight passage um, always a bit more difficult without autopilot which as you know we haven't got any more um, until that's prepared so hand steered again which is just annoying really you can't do anything and um, but we got wind eventually so we managed to sail most of it and tomorrow Antonio flies out on the 18th so that's why we need to get here a day before and then we'll probably stay a week or so and explore this island so we're kind of looking forward to that As deep as the sea No matter how rough Things may come to be You and me We're family Sing home hey, Yeah, so leaving back to The peace and stillness Of London uh, After this uh, incredible Adventure with these guys You know, so It was really an incredible adventure Because I got them to know them really well and uh, I knew them already, I knew Renka and Woody a little bit, but you know, to spend this time with them, especially the Pacific Crossing, was so worthwhile because those were three intense weeks where we just had to work together and... Oh, oh banana peels coming up. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so it was really good fun, yeah, and getting to see these islands, the joy of reaching dry land, uh, sailing the boat, that was a real eye-opener for me and a real interesting experience. And I've got 3,000 nautical miles I can apply to the OCC, my goodness! Anyway, so that's all good, but the film, I think, will um, tell its own story in a, in a really interesting way. And uh, yeah, I just want to say thank you guys! <laughs> and see you soon. So are you taking Antonio ashore? Yeah, with the delivery crew. Delivery crew. <laughs> Okay, so Antonio left us yesterday. He uh, flew back to England. Um, it was great having him on board. Uh, he was a really good crew member, as well as documenting the things we've been doing because he's making the pilot for the documentary that we talked about previously. So we're just leaving the uh, anchorage at Hukahiva. We managed to uh, get ashore. Well, the anchor and the kids got ashore. Antonio left us and... Uh... We heard about a beautiful bay in the northeast that we decided to sail around to and meet up with our friends. So we've been a little bit uh, stormbound the last uh, day or two because it's been raining and the wind's been really high so we've been reluctant to leave the boat uh, by itself on anchor uh, but it's died down a little bit today uh, so we're going to make an attempt to, to have a little walk into Hukahiva across the, uh, the tops and uh, just check out a few beaches and look around a bit. We found an outrigger canoe on the beach, which the Polynesians still use for fishing and transportation. They have one outrig on them, which prevents them capsizing and also provides stability. So we um, came ashore and um, we were looking for the path but um, we found this little chapel and um, it's a beautiful, cute little chapel and this French man, old French man invited us in and he wanted to show us the, 
mosaic that the French kids on a sailing boat had done. And also inside, there was all these 14 different images of the crucifix that had been made out of wood from the beach and sand and shells. Um, next to it there's a building and often they used to bring young children here for sort of camps and stuff. I was interested to know what, what he was doing there and he said he's been here since, um, well he's been in French Polynesia since 1972 and um, he, the reason why he came was because he was, well he, he was supposed to do military service and I don't think he wanted to and I think he, he was to be punished and he had a choice of two punishments, one was to go um, overseas and one was to do disciplinary service in Germany so he chose overseas it was a bit of a gamble because overseas meant either going to Chad to the war or to French Polynesia luckily um, he was chosen to come to French Polynesia and he came here and in 76 he met his wife who's from the island of Tahoa and they married and um, they had children and now he has five grandchildren and a great great grandchild he's um 72 now i think he said but the um sad thing is that his wife just died in october and um he was quite tearful telling us about her and he was obviously very much in love with her and um it was it pained him just to tell us about her and he showed us a photo that was there by the shrine and um yeah it brought a tear to my eye but he was a lovely man with a very warm heart and um, very kind to tell his story to us and show us the chapel. So we say goodbye to him and now we've found the path. This is the path we've been looking for. It's a path that leads over the pass, over the mountain to the next village and we want to go there to see it but also to get some more um, fruit if we can get hold of any because we've run out of fruit. So yeah we're doing this long trek <laughs> um, to try and find, um, we to do a bit of provisioning actually but it is a beautiful island. So as we're trekking, I keep seeing these little red seeds on the ground. And um, I noticed in the craft fair, these are the kind of necklaces and earrings they're selling made from these little red seeds. So they must come into the jungle and pick them and collect them and then make jewelry out of it. So there is this kind of zigzaggy path, but you know, sometimes people just go straight up. <laughs> You can do what? So I can get that mango. See that one right there? I can reach it, I promise. Uh, we, we've anchored in the bay on the other side of the island and we've uh, taken a hike over the hills and there's some spectacular views as you walk up there. And then we've arrived in this kind of, uh, this other bay. I'm not quite sure the name of the village, but it's obviously a step up from the other village. It's got a stone church and a concrete floor and some restaurants and a couple of shops. Uh, Renka just popped into the shop, a little village shop there. Renka? Yeah, yeah. You want to carry some more flour back? Sorry? Is there any flour for the next three days? What have you found? Because um, I could buy flour if you want. Oh yes, yeah, definitely. You, you want to carry it back over the mountain? Yes, I do. Okay. I mean, the other thing to mention around here is, if, if we haven't mentioned it before, is just how eye-wateringly expensive things are. I mean, we just got in there and uh, it's 390 uh, French Polynesian francs for one can of beer, which equates to roughly $3.90, uh, which is about, what, £3.20 or something for one can. So we went to a bar to get, um, to see some eels. There's like massive eels just in this running like brook, which is really weird because it's like the eels, like when they're going over the, um, when they're going up the water, their bodies are literally like out the water, they're so big and the, like, the river's so small and they're so big. What's in there, Ewan? Eel. Where? 
And then this person just walks up and says, here's some food, here you go. We originally went in there to look at the eels. We start eating it. And then he brings us more and more, and he's like, "Play, here's this, here's that, and here's that." They must have had some excess food, because like, they they started giving us space, and we're like, "Oh, sorry, we, we can't have any more." And they're just like, "Just take it." And they started like saying, "Do you want water?" And they started giving us like all these like fancy yeah, things like ceviche and like schnitzel. We just get this free food. We got like raw fish. We got um bread fruit and things like that and it was so tasty <laughs> it's funny i think I, mean, I think they must have seen the look on our kids faces and how much they appreciated it because um you know i suppose when you sail so far and it's so difficult to get to a place you right. appreciate everything and um most of the people in there probably they came by cruise ship so it's no big deal to get a meal in front of them but for us to have a meal like that in front of you after having sailed thousands of miles and then trekked over a mountain you really you know you really want to feed those sort of people because you can see that their face light up and some people maybe they just don't show that gratitude because it just didn't mean so much to them <laughs> look at me i don't look like something that would like ride on a cruise ship This is um, <laughs> pomelo and it's actually quite nice. There's loads of it growing around this public square. Yeah, someone just pointed and said it was really good to eat this stuff, so we're eating it, it's good vitamins. Okay, okay Mum, get me wet. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll yeah, get you wet because you're disgustingly dirty. I'm trying to make you look more sensible. Well, because of my skip-flop damage, um, you get now. I have to make a mud stew. Like a moth to so now with our bags stocked up with flour and pomelos we hiked back over the mountain to the bay where our boat is anchored your skin and can you trust that you won't blow away in the wind do you tether your wounds or let go of the That you someday descend. Just follow the road. Okay, so we're back after that amazing hike over to the other side of the um I well it was just the other bay actually. But yeah, we're back. It was quite a big trek getting there, but it was worth it. And it's nice to get back to our bay, our windy bay in Anaho. Unfortunately, our outboard wasn't being much fun, so our friends on Wave had to get us back to Mothership. Though it may not agree with the path that you... Well, we are going to scrub the bottom of the boat because we found loads of little gooseneck barnacles in it. So the parents are using child labour to um, get it the bottom of the boat cleaned. The kids, we offered them some pocket money, $15 each actually, if they all cleaned the hull, the waterline and the underside of the boat. And just glide through the air on a wing and a prayer till the day as we were doing it, the kids realised that we were getting stung by stuff. There was something stinging us. I think I saw a cookie shark. Where's Rowan? And Darius got no, bitten by you. something. Apparently they saw sharks as well. I didn't actually see any, I was too busy, but there were some sharks, but they were fine, they didn't bother us. Sharks don't tend to attack you, really. We just cleaned the hole uh, in the rain with sharks and stuff. Well, you weren't scared that you saw a shark, but I'm just saying we saw some sharks when we were swimming back earlier this morning. Yeah. Some black tip reef sharks. Oh, lovely. How big were they? They weren't that big, they were quite cute actually. Okay. We were at the beach, uh, we saw loads of baby reef sharks, but um, we, we kind of got into the water. Yeah, yeah, but we got into the water and they just bolted off, which was a shame. But if I'm gonna be honest, like, I feel like you can't stop cleaning the boat. Like, if you see a shark go by, you're just like, oh, hi, shark, and it won't bother you sometimes. 
So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I saw some sardines and lots of jellyfish that really hurt, but um, oh, yeah, and it's getting paid for it. On my rash, so it now looks infected. So, um, there were like loads of jellyfish under the boat. The stings are pretty bad when you, you only realize when you actually get out. So, um, we got out and I've got like stings all the way on my arms. I've got antihistamine cream on to try and stop me itching them, but they're really like itchy and a bit stingy and just really annoying and irritating. Yeah, but that, I think it's um, either sea wasps or jellyfish spores. I'm pretty sure that's a sting. It really, like I got, it one, I screamed and I'm afraid I got some down my shorts that really hurt. The worst part is they're gonna get itchy after and I've got them everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Oh, water! Here. Yeah. Yeah. Salty. Here. That's a fresh How did you not go out? I did. Oh, wow, that bird. Wait, Mum, do that again. It looks really cool. Oh, ow! Can I see? Oh, Mum, you've got them up there. Listen. So we got the uh, the water catches up, and uh, we don't think of it as rain. We think of it as liquid energy, because uh, even though we can't make solar on a day like today, we can collect the rain, and uh, it will save us. It does save us energy, because we uh, we don't have to put the water maker on then. Okay. Right, come see this. It's actually pretty nice. You should guys look at it. This is almost as fast as the tap that you get at shore power. Look! It was raining most of the morning and then we managed to all night shower off in the nice fresh water. Um, we filled up, probably put at least 100 litres um, of water into our tanks just from that rain. So I'm getting really all these things down there. <laughs> Who wants shampoo? Right, can't wait to have a nice normal warm shower. Nice hot shower! Nice hot shower! Nice hot shower! Thing lower so it's like eventually so it goes like I can see that pure fresh rain water. Oh it tastes so good. Oh ready? So what have you got there? Okay, Darren oh. funnel. Rain this water. Is not fun. This is drinkable. This is no fun, the rain stop. Don't put your hands in it, I'm about to put it in the thing to drink. Water. Rain's such a good thing, isn't it? Yeah, I love it. It gives you like water, like drinking water out of the sky. It's like the world's biggest water maker. Yeah. Uh, we finally caught the gecko that was on our boat. So I'm feeding it cake and sugar water, which it seems to like. And I also put a oh, dead that. fly in there. So yeah. The gecko is hiding the underneath that leaf. Okay, so we finished lots of jobs today and um, had a quite of a rainy day actually in and now we're off to the beach to uh, go for a little walk in the evening. It's beautiful. Hey. What have you found there? It's a hand It's an albino one. Oh, wow. Guy here, you know, he's got this beautiful garden that he's kept with fruit trees and um, some flowers and this lovely backdrop of mountains and the sea out the front. I mean, you know, it's a really basic house, but he's got a very nice life. So stay tuned for more adventures as we sail around the world. If you want to find out how to fix your boat, go to our Mothership Maintenance channel and you've got any questions you want to ask us, join our Patreon family. I had a dream last night about a